Good morning, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer. Hope you're doing very well today. Welcome to another Will It Rock segment. This one covering Baleful Mastery, or is it Sinister Dominance? That's what people were saying at first when Dominio Siniestro was spoiled, but right now we have an English language printing, the full art printing. Very cool card, by the way. Love the name, love the art. Uh, but will it rock? Will Baleful Mastery rock? In my view, absolutely not. I would not have even thought to have covered this one, frankly, but I had multiple, several DMs, actually, people saying they were hyped about it or they thought wanted to know my thoughts on it. I have had people post in my Discord about it. I've had some YouTube comments ask me about it, so I've got to cover it. I don't think it's going to get us there, guys. I don't think we want anything to do with this card as things stand, but we'll break it all down for you as always. Thank you for watching. Let's dive right into it. Baleful Mastery for 3 gray and 1 black is an instant that reads Exile Target Creature or Planeswalker. We're jumping down to the last line of text there, so you can have a 4 mana 1 for 1. That is nowhere near good enough, but it does exile, and that is really nice, admittedly. Exile effects very, very hard to come by in BGX outside of white splashes for Absin, and that's definitely sweet, but for this type of 4-mana 1-for-1 one with no other upside for us, I would definitely, at the bare minimum, like to see it hit a wider range of types. You're hitting only Creature or Planeswalker. That's not good enough to try to spend 4-mana and a 1-for-1 one one in Modern. I know things have maybe a little slower than they've been in ages past, but still, nowhere near good enough to be that slow. But there's another effect. Okay, well, let's read on. You may pay one gray, one black, rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Okay, now I'm talking. Now we're looking, now, now we're talking, rather. Now I'm looking at a two mana one for one that also exiles. I would play that card. What's the catch? What could the catch possibly be? Well, is it that bad? If the one gray, one black cost was paid, an opponent draws a card. Okay, abort mission. What is this, Veil of Summer? Like, what are we doing here? Drawing a card for the opponent to one for one them, only now we're one for twoing them. This, my friends, I hate to say it, is exactly the opposite of what we want to be doing. We want removal that makes them discard a card, or we want removal that draws us a card. We don't need to be giving the opponents any more cards, believe me. This is the, this runs counter to the entire purpose of a BGX deck, which is to strangle the opponent on resources in every single way that we can. And yes, we have to answer their threats. And yes, every now and then there is a downside that comes with that. Think of Path to Exile, Assassin's Trophy. This is way worse than those. We are just giving them a straight up card. It's not a land, it is a card. And we're only hitting a pretty narrow uh, range of types, only two types to be exact. Whereas Path to Exile, it's a one drop. It gives them a tapped land. Assassin's Trophy can hit absolutely everything under the sun, including lands themselves, which is arguably the main reason it sees play. That super high floor and the ability to break up big mana strategies. Baleful Mastery is just like a really slow or really bad removal spell, depending on how you're priced into using it. And the main thing, again, you can say for it is it exiles, and that's great. And we could use it. Like I said, we could use a playable exile effect in Rock, but this ain't it. Beyond that, if we assume, if you agree with me that the opponent drawing a card is just too bad to entertain for a one-for-one -one removal spell, it's not, it's not even, like, free. You know, if it costs nothing, maybe we'd have some use for it, or even one. But it still costs two. It's still, like, a Dreadbore Terminate um, Assassin's Trophy-style speed, right? Um, but maybe you say, okay, well, I just want to exile a thing. I'm not going to ever pay for two. I don't care if it's slow. Well, we already have Roska's Contempt, which is strictly better in that role. You gain two life. It does everything else, and you gain two life. Maybe not strictly better. Technically harder to cast for double black, but that will never come up in BGX, right? And frankly, if you are looking for a slow one-for-one -one removal spell, the gain two life is actually very relevant because you're going to need to stabilize if you're trying to one-for-one -one them on turn four, right? And the two life is definitely nice against creatures. So there you go. Vraska's Contempt already exists, already sees absolutely no play in modern BGX. As if that wasn't bad enough, my friends, Baleful Mastery also non-bowing with a lot of our core cards in some pretty major ways. One of the things that makes us able to justify playing a one-for-one -one removal based strategy is that Tarmogoyf rewards us for playing that game. We are growing the Goyf with every removal spell we cast, especially if it's hitting 
unusual types. And so here we have a spell that can tag a Planeswalker, doesn't even grow the goif. Definitely a non-bow. Definitely a non-bow. And then arguably an even worse non-bow with Dark Confidant because, of course, you're flipping the most painful spot removal of all time. If this card is revealed to Bob's triggered ability, you're going to take four. And you want your removal mostly against aggressive decks. You're taking four against the aggro deck only to either have to wait till your fourth turn to one for one them or to one for two them and give them a card. Either way, it is a complete disaster compared to playing almost any, literally any other removal spell that is reasonable. And finally, it is a tiny bit of a non-bow, not as extreme as the others with Scavenging Ooze, in that if you're specifically in a dominant position where you can remove something and then eat with the Scoos to gain a life and grow the Scoos, Baleful Mastery number one makes you less able to have the free mana after to activate because it costs four, and also it's going to exile anyway, right? So you don't get to really establish and turn the corner, bury your opponent under the Scoos. Um, that is a more minor non-bow because you're already in a good position if that is a concern, but it still exists. And also, um, we have some redundancy here because you can kind of build your own exile effects with scavenging use after you destroy something. I know that doesn't work on indestructible threats, but really, what indestructible creatures and planeswalkers are we worried about? I'm thinking of Heliod and Clothis. Baleful Mastery can't even tag those. If it could tag those, again, maybe we'd be talking, but here, no way. Ah, uh, so Scoos... Cling to Dust, Nile Spellbomb, these are cards that help you build your own exile effects in conjunction with the rock removal that is actually good. Now, just to give Mastery some better or best case scenarios, there will be situations where you draw an unwelcome discard spell, your opponent is basically hellbent, or literally hellbent, and then maybe, just maybe, you can kind of correct the downfalls of Mastery by using it for two, the opponent draws a card, then you get to Thought Caesar Inquisition it away. It's just like, it's just so bad to try to use your actual good cards, your core cards, to clean up the mess of a card that you probably shouldn't be playing in the first place. But there will be some situations where you just kind of have a Thought Seize sitting around anyway. Might as well use it to mitigate the downside of Baleful Mastery. Big problem with that. If they draw land, you're whiffing. If they draw instant speed effect, um, flash creature, stuff like that, they're flashing it in or playing it in response definitely still even with these stars aligning like this going to miss a good amount of the time Liliana of the Veil kind of the same energy and even unlike Thought Seize you can get a land out of their hand okay but if you've got the Liliana she's active she's uncontested you have the luxury even of waiting to activate her until after you do other things you are already in the driver's seat just don't let them get back in the game by giving them a card with baleful mastery right just like edict their threat or something or just plus one you know whatever you want to do so again there are some synergies, but their synergies not in the way that they make things better. Their synergies in the way that your good cards can maybe save you from the bad decision of playing this bad card some of the time. And, um, you know, I, I think all that's worth saying. I don't want to be too extreme here, right? And don't let me rain on your parade. Hey, if you think the card's got legs, play it. Don't listen to me. Report back, play it for science, whatever. But, um, and again, just to give mastery, maybe it's full due here. We also have to say that maybe, just maybe, it could shine a little bit more in Rakdos midrange than in BGX, and there are a few important reasons for this. Number one, you're looking at Kroxa. Between Kroxa and cards like Coligan's Command, you have different structures. You have more copies of targeted and non-targeted discard, because again, these Rakdos decks may be more likely to play a 7th or 8th Thought Seize and Inquisition effect than Rockwood. Um, so you have more discard effects overall, making the downside of Baleful Mastery maybe more easily contained. Also, Rakdos in general, a more aggressively slanted deck, has a quicker clock it can bring to bear. There will be more, but still not many situations where the card doesn't matter that you gave them because you killed them so quickly. Finally, Rakdos does not have scavenging use. Rakdos does not have as many um, free roll ways to kind of route around the need for exile. And it doesn't have those non-bows like Tarmogoyf. It doesn't play Bob as often. So all in all, Rakdos benefiting more from the Exile Clause, able to mitigate the downside of Baleful Mastery's cheaper way to cast it a little bit more. I still wouldn't be reaching for this card anytime soon, but if there is a shell where it looks a little bit better, maybe it's Rakdos. 
So there you go, guys. Hey, you know what? It's worth remembering Baleful Mastery exists. We do need exile effects on standby in case the meta goes a certain type of way on the back of a new printing, a new archetype. And this card is unique enough that it is worth remembering that it exists, and hopefully it was worth covering here. And uh, it's very cool. I love the name. I love the art. I love the energy here. I just don't like what it does. I don't think it can rock anytime soon with anything like modern how it is right now. But anyway, my friends, there you go. Those are my thoughts on Baleful Mastery. Thank you for watching. More spoilers and gameplay coming up soon. I'll see you then.